Uh, I would like to, to thank Francois to give me the opportunity uh, to share this idea at the end of the, uh, this very nice meeting. And uh, I would like to share with you this uh, idea because uh, uh, yesterday and today we discussed a lot about uh, a short passive range of motion. Sometimes we discuss about ability to perform any functional test like grasp and release something. Mm, we discuss about agreement with the patient about the goal is very important, obviously the agreement with the patient about the goal. But uh, in the same time, uh, maybe that we try to miss uh, uh, a point that I would like to discuss and to share with you, the, the body perception of the patient. Uh, yesterday, one of the speakers said that some patient, when look a picture before and after, start to say, oh, but this is, my, my hand, this is not true. We have some patients that don't like to see the video pre. This is another key point. W when, because frequently we ask, would you like to see the video pre surgical procedure? Pre no, 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 I don't like it. I don't like it. That means that there is something different from uh, contracture and deformities that we try to measure using passive range of motion, disability assessment, and so on. And, uh, uh, the perception of the patient. Then when we look something like this, it's possible to look in terms of active function, passive range of motion, or to identify a pattern like this one, uh, or to see the equine of arrow's foot like this one, or to see this one, and it's possible to describe from the point of view of the clinician. But the patient perspective is very important, it's very important, and uh, to do this, try to think outside the box. This is like a black box. Try to think just a bit outside the box. In, in which uh, way? First of all, when we discuss about narrative medicine, narrative medicine start after this very nice book, The Body Silent, on 87, is a book related to the personal experience uh, of uh, a biologist uh, uh, related to a very important myelopathy, spinal cord uh, uh, ethnologist uh, uh, re related to this one, and start to say, clinician asks me a lot of different things, but no one asks me, what is your feeling about your situation? No one. It's very nice because inside this book there is uh, a, a page where uh, the patient says, I have around me surgeon, plastic surgeon, uh, but I think that the most important in some way is uh, physician related to rehabilitation because I think that I need rehabilitation. And uh, in the same time, now this is a very recent paper and I suggest you to read this paper is the body talks. The body talks and how it's possible for us to realize why a patient, this is a very nice paper on brain, where uh, patients start to say, I don't want my body. Then when we would like to have uh, an outcome measure, if uh, we don't know what is the perception of the body of the patient, it's very difficult to realize how to do this in the right way. Then this not means that uh, uh, we don't have to measure spasticity, activity, everything, but we have something related to the brain lesion, related to the body image. Body image is mainly related to the feeling. Feeling is something different from sensation. Feeling is something related to perception, but is not exactly the same. Then body image is very important, and particularly we know that there are relationship, anatomical relationship, between activity on the parietal lobe and body image of the patient. That is completely different from proprioception and body scheme, body image, in, in some way. And due to this, you have a body image and the affordance. When we discuss, oh, we reach a goal, uh, the test is okay. We demonstrate that you are able to grasp and release a, a, a glass. Then you ask the patient, but do you use it during your daily life? No. 
Well, why? Because maybe that is a mix of perception of the body and the problem of affordance. Affordance is the feeling to use something because you think that you are able to do this. It's not just the ability to do this. Then we move from the problem of the passive function and cosmetic appearance to the problem of embodiment and disembodiment. And the, the problem of the sensory motor loop. This is the active inference model from Carl Freeston, UK. Very important to be able to say that when we discuss about posture, passive posture, we think that is something unrelated to activity of the brain. You have a lot of activity on the brain related to the passive posture that you have. And when you change the passive posture, it means that you change a lot of activity inside the brain to change the perception of the patient. And uh, this is just, from a, a theoretical point of view, the number of uh, uh, place inside our brain that have a, a connection and interconnection to try to have perception of the body. Just to, to say that this is, is absolutely true, there is a very rare case, this xenomyelia. Xenomyelia means that I have my hand, I would like to cut my hand. And uh, there is a very nice paper in brain where they analyze using MRI the brain of the patient that would like to cut. It's, it's like exactly the reverse of the phantom limb. And they realize that there are problems, look, on the parietal lobe, in different parts of the parietal lobe, and on the inferior parietal lobe and in sensor motor, uh, motor cortices. Try to think how many patients after stroke or traumatic brain injury have, are patients with a lesion in this place. Then it's not exactly the same to treat spasticity in a patient with a problem in the frontal lobe and in the parietal lobe. Due to this, there are body disorder too, that is another story. And uh, obviously the image means relationship with self-esteem. How it's possible to try to analyze this one, to move from perception of the patient to analysis and evaluation. We work in the last uh, four years with Andrea Serino of uh, University of Lausanne and the Colo Polytechnic Federal de Lausanne. is a neuropsychologist with a very important group about how to analyze body representation. Now we have the possibility to do this clinically and to measure and to quantify the problem related to body scheme, body image, and peripersonal space. space. This peripersonal space is very important, I will show you. This is the implicit representation of the body. Now we are ready to publish this data. I insist the chronic patient, stroke patient, uh, upper limb without spasticity, using this system where you are able to define the perception of the patient of the length of the uh, upper limb and uh, of the, the hand, this is exactly the, the Average of the perception of the patient. The length, uh, the length is shorter than the uh, non-affected side and larger. Then you, you have a different perception of this one. It's possible to measure exactly this one. And peripersonal uh, space representation is uh, the reaction time to um, sens sensory stimulus on the hand depending on the ability to increase the reaction time related to a sound that moves far away or very close to you. And due to this, we realized that the peripersonal space in this chronic patient is this one compared to this one in the uh, normal uh, site. Then means that you have a reduction of the ability to manage the peripersonal space, a, a reduction of the real di dimension of your uh, upper limb. Then it's possible to use it for each kind of treatment that we like to use. Then a questionnaire. A questionnaire related to the body feeling that we share from a uh, questionnaire related to pain, asking the patient, do you feel your arm sick, a stranger, numb, useless, or strange. And particularly is uh, uh, six means that uh, is like something that is death. 
or is something that uh, seems not to be part of my body. Try to think, this is incredible, it's not part of my body. Or uh, something that I don't like uh, absolutely. Then, in this group of 60 patients, looking the problem of feeling is related to disembodiment of the upper limb, we have the 90% of the patient that uh, think that is something different of the body, outside of the body, and that. And uh, there is the possibility to have a change of this disembodiment using different technique. We use electrical stimulation, um, uh, robotic glove for the upper limb and so on. It's okay. Compared to conventional where you don't have any statistical change, using different treatment is possible to reduce the disembodiment. Then maybe an outcome measure for surgical procedure too, the disembodiment, embodiment and disembodiment of the patient too. And finally, very simple, draw a person test. Draw a person test. It's very old. We start to do this five or six years ago uh, using the experience of Botulinum Toxin Club in Italy too. Try to draw a person as you like. Uh, you have to think that in, in Paris, someone worked about this a lot of years ago, and this is Catherine Moring is from uh, Sal um, Salpetriere. I met uh, her one year ago, now um, is retired, uh, she is retired, and uh, published a book related to self-image of the body of patient. Then it's possible to ask to do something like this and to measure. This is a normal subject. And this is a patient try to look the dimension, the proportion, and so on. This is another patient, and this is another patient too. Look, spontaneously, you don't have the hand and so on. Okay, and this is another patient too. This is a patient with the ability to extend, flex, grasp, and release, but uh, don't use it absolutely the upper limb. And uh, this is, a left stroke patient, nucleocapsular lesion three years ago. After three, we have to perform uh, selecting neurotomy and so on now, but the body is perfect. That means that you have the same pattern, but different body perception. Then we try to measure. In using a system like this, now there is, a, um, we, we use a, a, a system, is my engineer that do this, <laughs> it's okay. Then it's possible to measure the area, and then we check what happened using the area in 60 normal subjects, and uh, this is the mean area, 103. And then we test uh, what happens if uh, you are doing exactly the same in 33 chronic spastic patients versus non-spastic. It's okay. Look, the area moved from 103 to 48 and 60. Up to now, it, we would like to enlarge. Mm, you, we don't have major uh, change uh, spastic versus non-spastic, but the key problem is that they reduce the area of the body representation. Maybe an outcome measure this one. And uh, this is statistical analysis. Uh, th there is a statistical significance of this. And uh, again, a qualitative description that we use uh, starting from draw a person test, uh, where it's possible to have a maximum score of 90 plus one if uh, you are able to detect 20 globally. Uh, depending, uh, you put uh, everything, the head, the neck, uh, and so on. And then we have in healthy patient, depending on the strategy that you use, the mean value is uh, 17. And this is 11 and 13 in spastic and non-spastic. Then it's possible to quantify, draw a person test and to check what happened. Then, what means, Th this is a patient before botulinum toxin injection, and this is after. Then change, in any case, the, the 
ability to draw because maybe that if you change something you are able to change the perception of the body of the patient. Look, th this patient very small, put here and after here, that means that don't change nothing. The, the dimension and so on is exactly the same. And this the orientation too, maybe quite different. Then, body feeling using a questionnaire. Draw a person and to quantify this, two main possibility to measure this perception of the patient. If uh, you would like to measure more deeply using the test uh, that we developed with Serino, peripersonal space, and this related to body image dimension, then it's possible to move progressively because draw a person test means uh, two minutes and uh, the questionnaire means three minutes. The problem is to analyze it. And then we have now a representation of the patient in the right way and Giacometti help us uh, a, a lot. But the key point is exactly what uh, uh, the, the group of Freestone uh, is uh, working a lot on this. Then means that we are moving to look something different using a model of perception because means that using this you are looking internal model in the brain able to increase relationship between internal model and motor control. Motor control without internal model is very difficult. Then maybe that if uh, we change internal model, you are able to increase motor control and to have a different possibility. And particularly, we discuss a lot about uh, surgical technique, but it's very important to discuss a lot about rehabilitation technique after surgical procedure and now virtual reality, for example, open a window to change this body perception and we have to measure something able to define if we change really the connectivity of our brain because we are changing peripherally something that work with our internal representation of the body and then we have to relearn how to change internal representation of the body and to use our body in a different way, not just in terms of posture. And I finish with this observation of a patient about uh, hand close and open after um, laser. Say, I am unable to take a small ball. I am so happy because for 24 hours, I real, realize that my hand is open now and for me is more important than to take something because I stay 24 hours with my hand and just two minutes with a glass. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.